Hi everybody. Welcome Facebook friends. It's about 1.30. If you can see me or hear me, somebody let me know. I'll wait just a minute. I'm going to talk about uh, pastel supplies that I use and like. I made a few notes so I won't forget. I wanted you to uh, I wanted to say hello first before I turn the camera uh, to my drawing board. This is my studio. I'm at my drawing table. Behind me on the wall is a portrait I did of my dog, Sable. And uh, out in front of me that you can't see are the drawing tables where I give my classes. I'm going to turn my camera the other direction and show you the things that I use to paint with. I get a lot of emails every week about what supplies I recommend, what products that I like. So I thought this might be helpful to everyone who paints in pastels just to show you what I use and what I prefer. Everybody will find their own uh, specific pastels that they like more than others. And I think that's just natural and normal because we all have things that we're drawn to more than others. But I'm going to show you what works for me. So I'm going to turn the camera. I haven't done this before, so hopefully it'll work. Okay, I'll turn the camera. And then there's my studio. Lift this up like so. So here I am. This is my drawing table. And uh, let's see if we can move the light, get it lit a little better, maybe not. I'm going to show you what I use and what I recommend. I basically use two or three types of pastels. My favorites are Rembrandt's. Here's a small box of Rembrandt's that I found. Rembrandt Soft Pastels. They come in a variety of colors, but they come in sticks like this. They're soft pastels. I would recommend you get a small set to start with of um, assorted colors. This just happens to be mostly reds. Or you can get the half sticks. Now, hi Mary. Glad you're here. The reason I don't like the half stick boxes is because a lot of times they don't tell you what's in the box. And so you find a color you like and you use it and then you don't know what it is. So I prefer a whole stick. Then the other favorite, another favorite pastel of mine are new pastels. This is a whole box of new pastels. There are 96 colors in the box. Hi, Lorraine. And this is really, uh, I think, it's an affordable and necessary set of pastels. I'll show you what it looks like. So inside, these are mine. They're a little beat up. It has two trays of pastels and every imaginable color you may need. And between this and the Rembrandts, those are my workhorses, so to speak, of the pastel world. There are lots and lots of different pastels, but these are my favorite, Prismacolors and the Rembrandts. Now, another favorite pastel of mine are Giraud's. Giraud's are a French pastel, and they're a little softer and smaller than the Rembrandts. This, this particular box is, uh, hi Kim, this is Earth Tones. So you can see that they're a smaller, softer stick, but they have beautiful, beautiful colors. And I love to use these in my paintings. And they have a great black. Uh, they're black, as, they have, 526 is the number of the black. And it is wonderful, I love to use it. So that is another brand I like. Now there are many others like uh, Unison, Sennelier's, all kinds of colors, but those are the main ones that I use. Now, the other things that I use when I paint, 
I use several pencils. So I have charcoal pencils, black and white, and uh, a number nine Prismacolor uh, graphite pencil. So I have charcoal pencil, black and white one. I use these in every painting. I also use, from time to time, uh, Carbothello pastel pencils. So here's my jar of, of colored, uh, well, these are Conte's. <laughs> That's the way it goes with live, right? So these, I do use Conte pencils, but I use Carbothello pencils more often. So here's my Carbothellos. There they are. They have a nice range of colors, and they're very affordable, and they're wonderful. So I like to use those. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, how I store my pastels. I learned some tips along the way that might help you. Now, when I started out, I put everything in a little box. This is my gray box. It has all my gray pastel pieces inside of it. And I had all my color families grouped in little boxes. And that works pretty good, actually. But, uh, and uh, when I give a class, uh, when, they, when my students come to class, they get a box like this with all the colors in it they need. But I found another way. I'm gonna share that with you. Lisa Ober, if y'all don't know Lisa, Google her. And uh, she's uh, very, very talented. And here's how she stores her pastels. She uses shirt boxes. This is uh, my Giro box and it's got rubber bands on it. I wish I could lift my camera up higher so you could see, so it wouldn't be so close, but I don't think it's gonna work. Let's try. So this is my Giro box. It's a white shirt box from uh, the container store, I believe. And uh, it's lined with memory foam. Memory foam, one inch on the top and one inch in the bottom. And so all the pastels, these have to, like I said, this is my Giro box. They're all in here according to color family. So I go from black browns to warmer browns, yellows, greens, and blues. And this protects the pastels and uh, keeps them from breaking. You can travel with it that way. Lisa uh, ships them to her different classes where she goes. So this is, like I said, my Giro box. I'm not sure if I like this way as well as segregating it into little boxes and color families. I'm still kind of undecided on that. This is my uh, black gray box, just to show you. It's a smaller one, it's done the same way, and this has new pastels in it. So I have uh, all blacks and browns over to the light grays and whites, and it makes it easy to find a color that you need. Ah, Jeanette has a question. Is the name of the Giro set called Earth Tones? Let me check, Jeanette. It is indeed, it's called Earth, I have it marked as Earth Colors. Yes, on the back of the box, right here. I don't know if it can focus it or not. It says Earth Tones, so you are correct. Uh, I have a whole set of Giro's, but I also have several color sets. And uh, I find it's a great way to start out if you don't have, uh, you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on pastels and you don't know what part, what types of colors you're going to like. So if you buy a few sets and see which are going to be your favorite colors, and then you can add to that as you go along. So um, I do like, I tell you what I do like, and that's Unison's landscape set. They have the best landscape set. 
Um, I think there are 36 colors in it. It's the larger set, it's not the smaller one. And that I use a lot for backgrounds and was very glad I bought that. I also bought the Giro uh, landscape and their portrait set. And that's how I started out to develop what colors I wanna use for portraits. Almost all my portraits are done with Giro's. I just think they're the best. They're so soft and beautiful. Does anybody have any more color questions or on pastels, pastel colors or types? Okay, well let's talk about paper. What kind of papers do I use? I use, my favorite is velour paper. Now this is a pad of Hannah Mule velour paper. If you want to try it, you can buy a pad at Dick Blick. Uh, and uh, if this particular pad comes with lots of different colors in it. I don't recommend the black. The black is like a black hole, but you can try it. There's a yellow, a beige. My favorite is uh, gray. But this way you can sample different colors. Kim asks, um, have I ever used pan pastels? No, I have not. I, uh, so far I can't see what the advantage would be and they seem to be really expensive. And uh, so I just, I haven't uh, tried them. I'll tell you this, when you sharpen your pastels and you have all that pastel dust, you can save that dust. It's not a waste. You can take the dust uh, you can save it. Uh, you can mix it with a little bit of water and form a stick of pastel because it still has binder in it. So if I take, since the, the primary stick has binder in it, if you take the powder, which still has binder in it as well, mix a little bit of water in it, and you can make a stick of pastel. It will be gray because all the colors mixed together are gray, but you can, uh, you can, uh, use it on your painting so your dust is not a waste. Another paper I like to use is pastel matte. Now this is a pad of all kinds of different colors of pastel matte. It comes, this particular, I think they have two different pads that come in different colors. This one has gray paper left in it, and white paper, and uh, anthracite, which is a black. I like the anthracite a lot. So this one comes with 12 sheets, four shades, three pieces of paper each. And this is something you might want to try. Pastel matte has a slicker surface to it. Pastel goes on entirely different uh, than it does on velour paper. Velour paper is my favorite. It's my favorite of all. I have tried sanded papers as well. I don't care for them. <laughs> they, <laughs> they are very difficult to work with for me. Um, I think a lot of it's what you're used to. I, I made some nice paintings, but I really don't care for the sandpaper as much as the velour. Now I have a couple of um, paintings I wanna show you. The same painting completed on two different surfaces. The first one, let me clear some of this stuff out of the way. The first one is, uh, this was from my workshop this past weekend, Dawn Patrol. It is uh, a wolf on velour paper. Now uh, you can see, I hope you can see, it's a it has such a soft, velvety finish to it. Uh, the velour just has a richness to it that uh, I just, I love. So this is a wolf from Wolf Park. Her name is Dharma. And uh, she is a black phase wolf. And she is engaging in a typical wolf behavior, which is looking at you from behind a tree. 
And so this was our class workshop. Now, as I said, this one was done on velour. I'm going to show you another one. This is the same subject, Dharma behind the tree, but this was done on navy pastel mat. Now, this, I haven't finished it. I haven't done the tree on this side, but I did do the background, and I really liked the way the background turned out. It was easy to put the colors down on the pastel mat and blend them with my finger to get a nice uh, out of focus look that you would get. This tree was split down the middle. It was a fork in it and the wolves like to climb up in the middle of the tree. Now on the velour one, I didn't include the back of the tree, uh, but this one I did and I really like the way it worked. Now, when I'm working on, uh, and I do plan to finish it, it uh, it's just different from velour. I used more pencils in this. So the, the plus side, if you like to use uh, pastel pencils, this is a good surface for that. And you can also do a whole painting uh, with uh, on this surface with just new pastels and a few pencils. That's all you really need. When I do classes at uh, conventions where we have a limited, limited amount of time, I always use pastel mat and we use new pastels and Carbothello pencils. And uh, so the hair on the wolf is done mostly with pencils, but the underlying uh, color is done with the new pastel. You don't layer very much on uh, a pastel mat. You put one color next to each other and blend it together that way. But I was really pleased with how this turned out. So let me show you the other one again. You can see the difference. Here's the velour one. Now, I could have put the tree in this one as well, the background, but like I said, I didn't. And... Uh, it's just, to me, the velour produces a richer uh, color because of the layers, but they're pretty similar when you put them side by side. There we go. Y'all have to judge which one you like the best. Now I've got one other thing to show you, one of my little favorite things. Move this out of the way. Is my pencil sharpener. It's this little brass M&R sharpener that I got off Amazon. And this is what I use to sharpen my new pastels with. So here's another box of multicolored pastels. And to get the points that I get on my pastels, I use the M&R sharpener, and it works just great. Let me show you. Move some things out of the way. Put my... So if I have a pastel stick that's square, like this, and I want to put a point on it, I put it in the sharpener, but I don't force it. It goes in at an angle. And I just slowly twist it around. And I could get a nice sharp point, which makes it so much easier if you have something, if you're doing eyes. Uh, I almost always use new pastel sticks to do my eyes. I don't use pencils. I prefer the new pastel. And you just do that until you get a nice sharp point. I agree with Joan. Yes, she said she loves the darks I'm able to get on the velour paper and the background on the pastel mat. I agree, Joan. I wish there was some way to mix the two together. 
I think uh, it's just the background was easier to achieve on the pastel mat. You could do the same thing on the velour, it would just take a little bit longer. So I'm still learning and still working on things and uh, I'm delighted that you all joined me today for this little short tutor tutorial on uh, supplies. And uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm gonna sign off for now. Uh, next week, I plan to show you part of the fox I'll be painting. And uh, I will uh, let you know earlier in the week when we're going to do it. Um, the live video, Jeanette said her phone died. She didn't get to see it. The video will be saved automatically to Facebook, and then I will transfer it uh, to YouTube later today, my YouTube channel, so it'll be posted there as well. Now, if you have any questions uh, about supplies or materials, just uh, please put it in the comments or send me an email. Or if there's something else you'd like to know that would be helpful to you, please let me know because I would be glad to share with you uh, anything that I know. I, um, I, know. I love to paint and I love to teach other people to paint. Joan says she loves her sharpener for pencils. It does work on the, the new pastels. And yes, you can change the blade. I have lots of blades. So thank you all for watching. Happy pasteling and see you next week. Bye.